The Texans, I think, could be one of the more fun teams to rebuild in Madden 24. They've got a young quarterback they just drafted at number two. They traded up to number three from about, I think, 12 to go up and get Will Anderson Jr., who might be the best player of the entire draft. There's a chance that that is the case. We'll have to see. And I'm really excited to rebuild this team. Of course, I'm living in Houston now, have been for the past uh, several years at this point. And uh, there's starting to be a little bit of hype around the Texans, believe it or not. They've been very up and down over their history uh, over the past 20 years of existence. So, you know, we'll see if we can really make them a contender. We're going to build around some of these young studs. And there is certainly talent on the team, but there's also a ton of holes. And I think some people think the Texans are going to take a big step up. Their record is really, really tough. We'll have to see. Let's go over the team. And I will say, I'm glad you guys are really enjoying the videos out of the gate. I know we're so early on into the Madden 24 season. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. I'm going to keep saying it until I believe it. No, but I, I really do think it will be. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. A lot of people on YouTube are saying, oh man, 80% uh, of you who watch the video are not subscribed. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's not a reason for anyone to subscribe. You want to give a reason if you're a YouTuber watching this. And if you're watching this as a viewer, here's the reason. You're going to like the videos. You're already here. You're liking rebuilds. There's going to be more of them. Falcons franchise. It's going to be a good series. Hit the subscribe button. You're not going to want to miss it. Now, on that same note, I could talk about my second channel and say, hey, go over there. I'm so close to 100K. Nobody cares. Here's why you should go over and subscribe. If you like baseball, if you want to see a franchise series like Falcons franchise, I've got one with the Cincinnati Reds, Ellie De La Cruz, a ton of young, fun players. Check it out. If you don't like it, don't go over, don't subscribe. But if you think you might be interested, check it out. Thank you. Yeah, video sponsored by me. Take that, Manscaped. All right, TJ Stroud is the focal point of this rebuild. Taking it number two overall, he's got a ton of potential. And I probably normally wouldn't have thought that. I thought, okay, he's going to be a solid player. But you know what? Watching him in that game against Georgia, you really saw somebody who could do things, you know, out of the construct of the play, which I always say. But not everybody can do that. And CJ Stroud was one of those guys who just, you know, super, super accurate. Love that. But kind of didn't really do much when he was forced to make a play under pressure and get out of the pocket until he played Georgia and then was amazing in that game. Obviously, flashes of it before, but consistent greatness against the best defense in college football. And I'm not going to say one game completely changed my opinion on Stroud. I still really liked him as a prospect, but now I think the ceiling has got a little bit higher for him as a player. I'm so thankful that John Mechie's over cancer such a fun story overall for him with all the traveling he's done. I think he's like been, uh, I think he was born in Ghana or Taiwan, but has lived in both and then Canada, moved to New Jersey, recruited to Alabama, and then ended up being a draft pick. And I like John Mechie as a player. Slot receiver potentially, but Tank Dell's in here as well. Nathaniel Dell from Houston, so somewhat local, or definitely very local. Uh, Noah Brown's going to slide down the depth chart. I want to get some of these younger guys playing. Got Bobby Trees in here, Damian Pierce. Offensive line looks good. Titus Howard and Laramie Tunstall is one of the best tackle duos in the league really right now. And then you have Kenyon Green, who's a first round pick. Shaq Mason, who's a veteran on here. And then the rookie, Juice Scruggs. Could be good. Dalton Schultz is not bad either. And then defensively, this is where things really need to improve. But you got some pieces to build around. Will Anderson Jr., Derek Stingley, who I'm certainly moving up. If you think Desmond King is going to play over him, you are mistaken. Jack Griffin in here as well. Jalen Petrie could be uh, a ton of fun to develop. And then the linebackers need a lot of work, but Henry Toa Toa could move up. Christian Harris could move up quite a bit. Another Alabama player. And uh, we'll see what this team looks like. We're going to make some trades. I don't know if right away. We'll see what the expiring contracts look like. Jimmy Ward, of course going to team back up with D'Amico Ryans at head coach and play free safety. So it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting team. I think they're still kind of far away. We'll see how season one goes. Schultz one year contract, but I, I might want to bring him back. Denzel Perryman could be somebody that I trade at the deadline. I might make deadline trades. Singletary, absolutely. But I don't know what his interest is going to be. Shaq Griffin, probably as well. Desmond King, maybe. I can't say probably to all these guys, but some of them will definitely be on. A lot of one-year contracts. 
and a lot of one year remaining on some of these players too, even outside of the one year contracts like Steven Nelson. And we do have a tandem breakout on offense. We're two and four at the midseason mark. Not terrible. Colts are only one and six, so we could be doing a lot worse. By that, I mean <laughs> one more loss and one fewer win. Robert Woods took over last game. Now John Mechie wants to do it. Well, go out and get it done. I'd love to get John Mechie star dev. That could be huge. All he needs is probably 100 yards, maybe. Woods gets some XP. 150 yards. He's just not going to do that. So, all right. 22 players ready to negotiate contracts. That's so many. Schultz is going to be back. Singletary is good depth at running back, but maybe. If we have to pay him over $4 million per year, I'm out. And I'm going to be out. Desmond King's a maybe. Shaquille Griffin, we're going to move. Noah Brown, no one's really going to want. I want Jonathan Grenard back. I like him as a player. I want to develop him, but we'll have to see on that. And then, yeah, I mean, Perryman's got to go. Doesn't want to be here. Jacob Martin's not bad either. It's just going to be really tough to develop some of these guys. You know, if we re-sign you at 27, then you're 28, and you're going to start regressing. And you're already a low 70s overall with normal development. It's over. It's over for him. It's Jover. Nico Collins, I barely mentioned either, but I do like him. And uh, he's maybe a part of our plans. I want to try and trade a bunch of players right now, though. I might just make it one deal. Shaquille Griffin, Denzel Perryman, Noah Brown. Let's get some offers for those guys. I would take mid-round picks. Devin White, though, is very interesting. Requested a trade from Tampa in real life who apparently they were not planning on honoring that. Cardinals signed Byron Jones. Isaiah Rogers got cut because of the, the uh, gambling stuff, right? It's going to be tough to beat that Devin White offer. Although, hook him, Devin Duvernay, I'm interested. Yeah, I'm going to accept that. Devin White, welcome to Houston. We're going to give him a contract, and we have certainly made a big upgrade at inside linebacker because we're going to have a long-term guy in there now instead of just Denzel Perryman for half a year. Also, the talent in this draft class is really going to depend on how we approach free agent or well, how we approach free agency, I should say, is going to depend on the talent in this draft class. Obviously going to avoid quarterback. We're developing CJ Stroud in this one, but Lance Hawkinson from Wyoming looks very good. Now, a very different Wyoming quarterback from Josh Allen. He's only 6'1", probably doesn't have big hands, and probably doesn't look good in shorts. Bad athlete. The arm, hardly a rocket. I'm not interested. But we pretty much should have interest in every other position in the draft. Interesting to see a man-to-man -man archetype corner with A zone coverage. Only B man coverage. Good athlete, though. Ish. Huh. Okay, this running back looks amazing in the third or fourth round a ball carry vision break tackle and carrying physically he's not really a change of direction type guy he's more of a like i'll go right through you so a goal line back in the mid rounds might not be the worst idea overall though i will say i'm not stoked with the talent i'm seeing in this class i could be missing it didn't really look at offensive linemen too much it seemed to be a lot of tackles high but We'll see what happens. This center looks really good, but I don't really need a center necessarily. We're trying to upgrade and develop Juice Scruggs. It could not happen. We could go somewhere else. We could play him at guard. I don't know. Well, we smashed the Panthers 38-0. It doesn't mean we got this breakout going on, but I moved John Mechie in a slot receiver one and wide receiver one, so there is a chance, and it didn't go the way we wanted it to. So John Mechie not getting a boost here. We do just completely dismantle and destroy the Panthers, but didn't get the actual result we wanted. This first season doesn't really mean a whole lot, at least in terms of winning and losing. As Devin White, part of why he was traded is he is in a contract year. He is going to start for us, though. We're going to give him that money. And he can't fully commit right now. What is this, a relationship? Dude, that is a lame text to get back. Come on, Devin. I would do a three-year contract for Dalton Schultz. Close to 10 million, a little bit over. Dalton Schultz returns. He's just a good age and a good development trait, so decent enough. And we'll keep him around. Devin Singletary, I talked about trading. I didn't end up doing it. I think a one-year deal. I know I'm going over what I said, but one year is really not too bad. And uh, we can trade him next year. And he might develop a little bit more. 
The trade value on running backs is not high anyway, so it doesn't really matter a ton. About a two-year extension for Desmond King. He's going to play slot corner, potentially some safety. We have some flexibility there. And then Jonathan Grenard. Until we get a, an actual big-time edge rusher, I'm going to keep trying to develop Jonathan Grenard. He just doesn't want to be here either. And I'm not going to overpay him to keep him in town. Same thing with Jacob Martin. Steven Nelson, I kind of struggle to see what his value is other than yet yeah, like a rental corner. So he's back. And then we need Sheldon Rankins back purely because I don't have anyone else at defensive tackle. So I know it's only a one-year deal. We're still going to have these issues that come up next year, the same as they did this year. But we're just going to keep putting it off. I'm going to procrastinate this entire rebuild and uh, we'll see... We'll see what next year looks like. We're just going to simulate to the offseason. I don't think this is a playoff team. I could be wrong, but I don't think it is. Wow, we went 4-13. and 13. We only won one more game the rest of the season? I was expecting like 6 or 7. I'm not like that mad about it because our draft pick uh, is not going to be ours. It belongs to the Cardinals, remember? So I wanted to win as many games as possible. It just didn't matter. We have the Browns first round pick, but we lost every game after the midseason mark except for the season finale. Unbelievable. What a losing streak. And obviously not forcing that one way or another. We just suck by ourselves. Chiefs beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. So if I didn't mention it already, and I, I just kind of touched on it there, the Texans traded away their own first round pick instead of the Browns, and maybe they couldn't do it. I'm not saying, oh, that just, why didn't you trade the worst projected first round pick? But they traded their own first round pick, which could be a lot more valuable than the Browns first round pick with the Watson trade, which that's going to be our first round pick this year. So um, we wanted to win as many games as possible was kind of what I was getting at. Mahomes wins Super Bowl MVP. Dak Prescott, as he seems to in these rebuilds, takes home NFL MVP with CD Lamb winning Offensive Player of the Year. Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. Bijan Robinson, Rookie of the Year. Love to see it. And then Christian Gonzalez, who was my CB1 by a hair over Devin Witherspoon, wins Defensive Rookie of the Year with the Patriots over anybody else. Now, I was hoping that was going to be Will Anderson Jr. That was my hope and expectation heading into this rebuild. Didn't end up happening. CJ Stroud was not very good as a rookie. About 3,200 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, 12 picks. And if we're going to be a successful team in this rebuild, it's going to completely depend on CJ Stroud developing and playing well. Throw powers into the 90s, that's nice. He's still accurate. We just got to get more reps, and he's going to be better. That was terrible. Damian Pierce had a decent year. I like those numbers. And then receiving, Dalton Schultz led us in catches, yards, and we basically had no receiving touchdowns. So not a whole lot to show there. But defensively, Devin White, 141 tackles, 6 for loss, 3 sacks, 4 picks. Great year. Will Anderson Jr. had 14 tackles for loss, but only 4.5 sacks. And just like C.J. Stroud, he only has star development. So it's going to be a little bit tougher to get him upgraded. Although he's already an 82, about to be an 83. He's going to end up being really, really good for us. Has every trait you could want. And we basically had no interceptions either. This team was just pretty much the worst in the entire league. Really, really bad. So this is where it's time to just bring back Devin White no matter what. He wants more money, which I wish you didn't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up it slightly. We just have to bring in Devin White. And he is back. Long-term deal. He had a great season last year. But Grenard now, 27 years old. We just got to let these guys go. I mean, Corey Littleton got star dev to his credit, but he's gone. Greg Little provides little help to me. He's gone. Jacob Martin, as I said, is going to be 28. There's no real reason to keep him around. $53 million to potentially spend here in free agency. We need upgrades. Just who's ever here, we need upgrades. Rashawn Gary would be a huge one. He doesn't really want to be here. Christian Wilkins, though, seems like the Houston Texans check a ton of boxes. He wants to be in a warm weather state. Well, believe me, you're getting it in Houston. It is hot as hell here. It is only 98, actually quite a nice day here in Houston today. Humidity probably only makes it feel like 106. So it's nicer than it's been lately. And uh, Christian Wilkins, I'd give you a four-year deal. He's going to play interior defensive line. Already 28, kind of stinks, but 
he's going to be good, man. And I know if it's between Rashawn Gary and Christian Wilkins, oh man, Rashawn Gary getting an edge rusher would be bigger. But Wilkins wants to be here, fills a need, is cheaper as well. Let's just change the details of this a little bit since the uh, competition for him is not great right now. I'm going to keep that offer. I think that's really, really good. And then nobody really wants to be here is tough. Patrick Queen, maybe. Grant Delpit could be interested. Now, he doesn't want to be here because he doesn't think he's going to start. Petrie Ward, I guess. Okay, going after Christian Wilkins, trying to bring back Kaimi Fairbairn, and going after Braden Mann from Texas A&M, just up the road, about an hour, 15, hour and a half away. And we now have more competition for Christian Wilkins. Did get Fairbairn and Braden Mann. Lions trying to bring in Christian Wilkins. Don't want that to happen. And Christian Wilkins is a Texan. Welcome. Huge upgrade to our defensive line. Edge, still a problem, for sure. But it's uh, it's one that we might address right away in the draft. We'll see. NFL draft time. We don't pick until number 20. So if we want to move up for somebody, you know, now is the time to decide. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these players and uh, see if it's worth moving up for. So Alan Short, round one talent. That's good, but not going to jump up into the top five for someone that's not a top five talent. I don't think. Don't think I'm going to do that. Defensive tackle looks pretty good. Max Haskins from Georgia. Can't go wrong with a Georgia defensive lineman these days. So I like his his uh, availability opportunity at 20 or so. I think he's going to be available. I can just say it like a normal person. I don't have to do whatever that just was. Marshawn Morton, a decent enough athlete. Skills are pretty good. Remember, an outside linebacker is going to move down to play defensive end in our 4-3. So... Picture him at defensive end, not outside linebacker, of course. Now, Terry Evans is not like a super amazing athlete or anything, but he seems like he's good skill-wise. NC State pass rusher, Texans have gone that route before, very high in the draft. You guys might remember Mario Williams. Ever heard of him? He's pretty good. Another LSU player. Might be the best of both worlds here. Not really. Can't really rush the passer. Forget that. We're not going to move up. So it's time to simulate, see who's available at 20, and then make a move based off that. We pick in about 10 or so spots anyway. So we're really not in too much of a bad spot. Terry Evans is available. Martin Carter, a receiver I looked at earlier in Tremaine Beckham. The defensive tackles there, I might lean that way. So morale is definitely affecting the team. Robert Woods is down to a 71. Man, regression really smacked him in the face. Here's what we can do. We can still consider drafting offensive line. I know Drew Scruggs, rookie, but he's low rated. If I can go and get a big upgrade, I'm going to do it. Defensive tackle, well, Wilkins is going to move over. We need edge more than anything, right? But... Dylan Horton is an option, I guess. Here's the thing. I don't just want to go and draft an edge rusher over a player who's better, I think, just because we need that position. We still need interior defensive line as well. It's not like Sheldon Rankins is the guy. He's, what, a 74 now at 30 years old? Regression's really hitting some of these guys hard. It's just going to be take the best player available and figure it out. That's what it is. Yeah, and I think Max Haskins just is the best player available at somewhat of a position of need for us. So we're going to go ahead and draft him. Hopefully better than normal dev. It's not. Well, that sucks. Plain and simple. I hate to see that. Still think he's going to be good, but I really don't like to see normal development. I really don't. He's probably going to be at least what Sheldon Rankins is and 10 years younger. So I, I expect we have a starter right away. Second round now, and then we don't pick until basically the end of the third. So I have to make this one count. It's going to end up being the center here. Daryl Franks from Wisconsin. He looks really good, and I think we could have a starter right away here. He might be the best player, I don't want to say in the whole draft. Uh, the power element of his game is completely lacking, but I think he's going to end up being quite good, potentially better than the player we drafted at number 20. So Daryl Franks, welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, we love to see. 89 strength. He's a good athlete. Change of direction's a bit low, but that's all right. He's an offensive lineman. It's not going to be the end-all, be-all there. 
important for interior offensive linemen, sure. But for our purposes, I think we're going to be fine. End of the third round here. If the running back is available, I think I'll draft him. If not, I think I will trade down. He's not available. I'll take a look first, but we are probably going to trade down here. Actually, you know, this tight end looks pretty good. I know we have Brevin Jordan. Spencer Brackett is more of a run blocking tight end. And it seems to be okay catching the football too. Hidden Dev, not bad. Also, he's a unit at 6'3", 265. It's like an extension of the offensive line almost. Vikings are offering a 2026 third round pick to trade down here. So you know what? It is a couple of years away, but it is better than this pick. And we're just going to do some trading down now. And that's just, it is what it is. We'll take a future pick next year. Same spot, draft class might be better. Might be more players we want to draft there. And we're pretty much going to start this next season. I might do a training camp drill or two. Try to get some rookies, some skill points. And that's kind of a fun mix-up for this year compared to last year. I don't know like, if we're going to do that every rebuild, but it's possible. I don't know if I'll show it in every rebuild. I think you guys might get sick of watching it. Draft recap. Do we have a couple of starters? Please. Let's see. 73 overall interior defensive lineman. We thought it would be about that. 74 on the center. I like that. That's good. 70 and 70. CPU actually drafted a 70 overall running back for us in the seventh round. It's not going to do anything really. But a power back with 90 speed, 90 accelerations, not the worst thing in the world. Can't catch at all but has a possession catch trait. That's interesting. Was this just like not that good of a draft class? Okay, so it wasn't awful by any means. It wasn't amazing either, but there was an 82 overall strong safety, Jeremiah Williams from Ohio State, 91 speed, 95 acceleration, 81 man coverage. Wow. 75 zone, 77 hit power. Yeah, he seems pretty good. I don't really see an 82 overall here, but I mean, he's definitely a pretty good athlete. 95 acceleration and the man coverage is, is really good too, but it's strong safety. That's going to be a little bit less valuable than zone coverage. You know, I wish so badly that there was an offensive line drill that you could use to develop players. I'm going to throw Will Anderson Jr. in trench battle and uh, try to get him a skill point. Don't really care about gold here, but uh, we definitely want a skill point. So let's see if we can do that. Will Anderson Jr. should just be able to easily go through these guys. How about disengage from this block, please? Oh my goodness. Give me that multiplier. We didn't get it there. Little bull rush. Get off the block. Boom. Bryce Young. Ooh, sack fumble as well. Nice. Didn't get the skill point there. That's why I keep trying the, uh, the power rush. Because you can actually get that skill point bonus. Where that swim move usually doesn't get it, you have to go back for it. Which I guess we could do. That's not the end of the world there. And second still. And another sack. This is nice because I'll tell you, when I was doing this in Falcons franchise, if you guys watched that series, Arnold Abicady had some trouble bringing down Desmond Ritter. And uh, it was really screwing us up. The reason why I'm going back there is to get that multiplier and he, he gets forced out of bounds. Okay, whatever. Rushing attack is probably my best overall drill. And uh, Damian Pierce pretty much guaranteed a skill point here. I'd be shocked if I didn't get gold. It's all about speed here. And uh, diving into the end zone. Or the, the celebration dives. You want to be just as fast as possible. And uh, oftentimes you're going to be able to get them uh, in a position where you juke them out. But not always. So don't force it. It's all about speed. You want as many reps as possible. You want that multiplier to get as high as possible. So don't worry about celebrating early. Don't worry about, you know, searching for contact to juke somebody out. Only do it when you have to. Or right there works. Oh, that didn't count as a touchdown. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Whatever. Still probably won't matter. I think we're still probably going to get gold here really easily. I feel like we got screwed there, though. And that's part of what I'm talking about with don't go searching for a juke. Had the end zone. Try to get the juke instead. And we didn't really need to. Just get the celebration points, get the multiplier up. You're going to get gold. And uh, that's where we're on pace here right now. Four. And look how slow. Is that Jalen Petrie? No, it's not. It's Chad Hansen. You, I, the person was way whiter than I thought initially. But yeah, we're already to silver. We might have one more play left if we're quick. 
Two seconds, one second, dive! We got .133 on the clock. We're all ready to gold though, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, easy gold. Chase and tackle with Christian Harris is gonna be big though. Really need skill points here. And this might be a touchdown. <laughs> That's not a good start. All right, we're making a ton of plays. Multiplier so high. Oh, it's gold already. So yeah, we're guaranteed at this point. And even with a missed tackle, maybe it takes us down to, to silver or whatever. But the worst part is the multiplier going down to one. But it, it's it's already over. It's guaranteed gold. Things would have to go terribly wrong. And they are. What's happening? Make a tackle. All of a sudden, you can't make a tackle as soon as I start speaking? Kidding me. It's over. All right. Shut it down. Easy gold. Ooh, we got gold. Skill point and some XP for Derek Stingley. And I think we're going to do red zone battle with Jalen Petrie. Try to get a boost for him too. Not a bad start with an interception on the first play. Maybe the second as well. Nope, but we'll take the good coverage. That was a disgusting play from Jalen Petrie. Oh my goodness. It's decent coverage. We'll take that. This is absolutely the most frustrating drill in the game. It's just get out run simulator. That's pretty much what it comes down to. I'll take silver. We'll just take the 50 on this. This drill is uh, super easy once you figure out the method. You want to get to the outside, just fake him back in and reverse, and then head for the 400. It's just guaranteed 400 every time if you time it right. If he forces you inside, it gets a little bit tougher. Because then you can't guarantee the 400. But if you got a guy like John Mechie that can just go catch it, it's an easy 20k. And then I guess Tank Dell in red zone attack. Could do Nico Collins. I just think he might kind of be the odd man out for me on this team. But same method on this drill. And uh, with Tank Dell's change of direction, it should be money. Just aim for the 400 again. If you got to time it right. But, you know, if you do, easy points should be easy gold here. All ready to bronze after just two reps. I'm going to time that a bit early. That's okay. Just get that multiplier up. Multiplier goes up with every time you catch the football. And then even though, oh, geez, CJ Stroud killing me there. Even though we're not getting 400 every time, still decent points. You could also just do this and kind of weave at the start, but sometimes they'll do that. And that completely kills your uh, multiplier there. So you do have to worry about it if you do this method. It is kind of easy to win right away, but then he can throw it out of bounds. So you run a little bit of a risk and you need some good throws. So I want gold. I'm going to do it again. But, uh, yeah, this is a method you can use. But you're, you're screwed if the pass isn't accurate or if the DB uh, makes a play back on the ball. So, you know, at your own risk. Can we break 20K? Is it possible? I'm not really sure if it's possible. Guess we'll find out here. Oh, well, we can. And we actually could have got it even a little bit more. We'll take 20. And I guess I might as well do target passing for CJ Stroud. Fine. We'll do the quarterback. I'm just less good at this one. So it scares me more. Wanted two there. That's okay. Ooh, we'll take that. Just barely got that second ring. A high point could have been smart. We'll go for X here. I think ball's got to come out now. Oh, a little early. We should guarantee silver on this one. Gold could be tougher. Let's get rid of the ball quickly. Dart. Times six multiplier. We're going to go deep down the field here. This should be killer. There's one. There's two! Double bullseye! And it's guaranteed gold. Wow, that was absolutely massive. There's one. Oh, I'm good at this now. I was so bad at this. But this is going to be like a 30k rep here. Maybe even slightly more. Yeah, could be. Oh, huge. Nearly 40! 36.5 might be a bit of a stretch, but okay, that's... That's way better than I expected to do. The double bullseye with the multiplier, huge difference maker. We have so many skill points now. So we'll upgrade these guys and get ready for season number two. I don't really want to call John Mechie the third Robert Jr. He's already the third. You don't need to be his dad. Okay, Robert? Bobby Trees? We need him to get open more. Number one job of a receiver. I know it's like catch the ball. That's Catching's cool. I'm all for catching, but you got to be able to get open. That's, I mean, you got to be able to do it all, really. And then you can be good. Ooh, Derek Stingley. 
Training camp standout. Boost his zone. His man coverage is already in a good spot. Getting his zone up five is unreal. He might be like an 82-83 overall now. Now, the thing is, the training camp standout is still going to continue into the regular season. And it's just really tough for DBs to do anything in simulation. So, we might have to go into the game and simulate. Or a chance at Derek Stingley doing any of those things. So, I'm going to try that. Yeah, so Franks is going to start at center. Just no-brainer. Bracket blocking tight end at tight end two. I don't mind. And then defensively... Uh, we have to move Christian Wilkins over. We need an edge rusher so badly. I just don't know how to get one right now. Who is this? Who are you? Damian Green. No recollection of drafting Damian Green. Where did you come from? Undrafted in 2024. He's got the future starter tag. The CPU just signed what seems to be a decent undrafted free agent rookie. Interesting. I'm cool with that. I'm not going to complain. He might be an instant starter. This was an undrafted free agent? I'm in. I'm all the way in. Christian Wilkins goes up to a 90 overall defensive tackle, by the way. Malik Collins, we don't need. Sheldon Rankins, whatever. Haskins is going to move up. I'll probably just start him. We need an edge rusher so bad, but it's, it's just it's not going to happen this year. There's not really another way to say it. Just can't do it this year. It's going to be another building year, but that's what a rebuild is, right? Two and five. Bad. That's the review of that, and we're going to get better. That's just, we knew this was going to be a growing year. That's how we're going to package this disgusting season up to this point. And... The weaknesses of the class right outside linebacker. That is bad. Corner, wide receiver, left tackle are good positions in this class. But remember, that's more about depth and not necessarily top-end talent. So there could still be good position or good players at right outside linebacker, center, or left guard. But we might use this pick on a corner or a wide receiver. Definitely potential for that. It seems like we're going to be picking pretty high in the draft. And I'm not going to commit to any position right now. That'd be stupid, right? But... There's a really good player, like Eric Davis could be. Reds legend. A catching traffic, A catching. Decent athlete. What's the route running looking like? Pretty good, actually. Eric Davis at 6'4", 217 could be worth a top pick. Josh Bradley has A's all over the place at outside linebacker, plus great to elite speed. What's wrong? He's only 21 years old. He's around 2-3 to three projected player. That might be the number one player on the board for me right now. Who's going to be a free agent for us? 14 players, probably most of them not impactful, but we'll see what the top looks like. Devin Singletary might finally trade him. Nico Collins is going to walk. Damian Green, of course, as an undrafted rookie free agent, is only on a one-year deal. I think we're going to bring him back. Not going to be terribly expensive and could be good. So he wants more money. Dude, you're a bitch. That's all, that's all right. You can want more money. That's fine. Davis Mills is going to walk. Jimmy Ward is 33, but he's still good. That's the thing. What about a two-year deal? He wants more money. That's just what it is. Wants more money. And then we'll have fifth-year options to address on Kenyon Green and Derek Stingley. We'll pick up both of them, and we'll deal with the rest of these later. But Singletary, we are going to trade. Nico Collins, I just don't know what the value is going to be. I'll try to get maybe a mid-round pick back for Devin Singletary if we can, but it probably won't be very much. We do have two first-round picks, though, so we're in a decent spot. I might add a couple of fours. I don't need all of them. And Devin Singletary. And we'll see if we can get back. I mean, I'd love a second. Even a third would be good for this. I would take that in a second. The only offer we have is for a Shad Bateman and a seventh. That would be good for us just feels a little weird would the Ravens move for Shad Bateman for this in 2025 uh, I don't know they tried to trade him to us in year one as well I just felt weird accepting that offer Rock Yassine has superstar dev I kind of just don't want a player I just want a pick okay Devin Singletary and four fourth round picks for a pick projected to be at the top of the second round from Chicago Weird trade, but I like it. Okay, I didn't even bother mentioning it because I didn't think it would happen. 
where I didn't think it would be important really. But Dylan Horton now has star dev because and 20,000 XP because he had a breakout game against the Dolphins. We beat them 16 to 10. I was just going to simulate to week 11 so I could do the focus players and we got a bit lucky with Dylan Horton. Now, the bad thing about that is that Dylan Horton is not very good. So I don't know how much that changes everything, but I mean, it, it all right. Might want to check out some of these corners. These top two look like they could be very, very good. I wouldn't say that corners are our biggest need, but we could certainly just solidify that position if we draft a complete stud. Ron Malone's not athletic enough for me. What about Joel Richardson? 6'1", 22 years old. Just, I don't like solid to good speed. I want better than that. Now, he does have five skill point upgrades. So, Dylan Horton actually could be a usable player now with star development. Power moves is really low. Block shedding is not in a good spot either. 24 years old. Like, there might be something here, but it's, it's going to be tough for him to be a long-term option for us. It just really will be. He's going to be up to a 71. It's not amazing, but... I mean, who knows? Maybe by the end of the season, he can be a 74. <laughs> I don't even know if it's going to be that high. We got the block shed in a reasonable spot now. Power moves is still not super high. But uh, who knows? His, his potential has definitely been raised, but I'm just not sure by how much. I'm going to do improviser for CJ Stroud. That's what I upgraded last time. CPU is going to be upgrading field general. Throw on the run by three and throw power by one. That is not bad. Medium accuracy could definitely get better. I don't know why that's not really being upgraded at all. But CJ Stroud does not look so bad here. Up to an 80, 22 years old star dev. I think we're about to turn the corner. Again, might not be this season, but next season, I'm starting to get some confidence in this team. So we didn't make the playoffs, but as I said, I think we are turning the corner. Nine wins this season. Big upgrade. Really, really big upgrade. We have a little bit of momentum. CJ Stroud with... I mean, about the same number of passing yards, but obviously touchdown interception ratio got a little bit better. Damian Pierce, very comparable numbers, but more attempts. 16 TDs is nice. Tank Dell actually put together a pretty good season. Nine touchdowns for Schultz. We need a big time receiver. This draft could be a lot of fun if we play it right. Tackles for loss, 19 from Will Anderson Jr. We also need more pressure. 16 TFLs from Horton, 12 from the rookie Max Haskins, also had four sacks. Just not really getting any pressure. Will Anderson Jr. is not doing a whole lot. Bunch of interceptions for King and Stingley, though. We need to get more pressures, get more sacks, and Will Anderson Jr. needs to take a step up. The ability is there. Next season's going to be Cowboys beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Again, this is something we've seen a lot I think over the past several years, I have i haven't seen teams match up in the Super Bowl more than the Cowboys and the Chiefs. Just haven't. Nothing doing for us in the awards, although Josh Allen wins MVP. Good for him. But uh, we're focusing on CJ Stroud. We're taking that next step up, and this is going to be the year. We, I think, will win the division. As I mentioned, going to pick up the options on Stanley and Green, then extend them next year, so or year after that. Collins, again, we're just moving on. But Damian Green, I want back. We'll give him three-year extension. He's at the very least good depth. Doesn't mean I'm not going to draft a linebacker. But I do want to keep him around. Jimmy Ward is regressing. Uh, I'll give him a two-year contract. He's going to take a little bit of a pay cut. Because he's like, oh, I regressed. I'm bad now. Should have accepted the first one. Don't know what to tell you. What about free agency here? Show me somebody amazing, please. Joel Batonio, Tyrant Smith, Wyatt Teller. A lot of offensive line. Tyrant Smith doesn't make sense. Tyrant Smith. <laughs> well, that's true, but Tyrant Matthew doesn't make sense to go after either. Trey Smith, no. I mean, they're good players. It just doesn't fit what we need. Dalton Schultz up to superstar dev. Okay, that could be a little bit of a difference maker. Frank's head star dev, if we didn't talk about that earlier, so did the backup tight end. Desmond King up to superstar dev. Dylan Horton remains unchanged. Christian Harris up to star. Would have been nice if Green got it. The decent team. Still a lot of holes, man. 
What do we need here? Linebacker, maybe. Still feel like we have a long way to go. Edge is a, is a problem, but we might draft one. I don't know what to do here. Zadarius Smith, just for a year, kind of wants to be here. This is a nice insurance policy if we don't land a really good edge rusher in the draft. He's at least somebody that can come in and we can feel good about him starting. But I'm going after DJ Reed, Zadarius Smith, and that's it. Reed is just an upgrade at corner. And we got both of them, Reed and Smith. Only a two-year deal for Reed. I just don't know how we're going to upgrade corner. I figure he's a decent enough option. And Josh Bradley is a round one talent. I, I That's what I said. I'm like, why is this guy a round three to four projection? He's clearly really, really good. A, everything. And he's a good athlete. I mean, absolute no-brainer selection there. I am tempted to find out if Eric Davis is a top five player in the class. And I might do that. I mean, I might as well. Why not? The receiver should be available outside the top five. It's just if we want Damon Whitworth, we'd have to move up. And that's the only player I would potentially move up for. Potential starting defensive end, elite speed, and acceleration. That's the difference maker. Block shedding is low, but everything else is good. And, I mean, block shedding is important, but it's not the end-all be-all. Could be worth the number one pick. NFL draft time, I really hope the receiver is a top five player because I will move up. We don't pick till number 17. We have two first round picks this year though. So they're both beyond 17, obviously. So we would have to move up a big way. Eric Davis is a top five player in the class. Might be the best player in the class. It has to be done. This is the game changing receiver I was looking for. A, for awareness, break tackle, catch in traffic, catching, release, stiff arm, run blocking, short route running. He's a mean receiver. C deep route running, whatever. B medium route running, pretty good. B spectacular catch. This is a very good player. He's got a trade up, maybe number four, number five. Guarantee that we get him. And it seems like there's, there's going to be a draft shock that puts Damon Whitworth to number one. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I'm not sure I'm going to trade all the way up for him. I'd rather have David Johnson at the pick uh, where we don't have to trade all the way up to one. So we'll see if that happens. But Eric Davis, I'm trading inside the top five for. And then Josh Bradley is a good off-ball linebacker. This should be a really good class for us. And there he goes, Damon Whitworth at number one. Kind of thought that could happen for the mock drafts. Don't take the receiver, please. All right, this is where we're going to think about it. Menus, so slow, okay. So it's 17, 18, 40, and 49 for us. I might be willing to trade a future first round pick to move up, by the way. Because we need picks this year. We're, we're starting to go for it. Okay, trading a 2025 round one, number 18, and a 2027 round one. So not next year, but the year after that, which is really nice. Gives us a ton of flexibility to move up for potentially the number one player in the entire draft class. And that is a wide receiver from Oklahoma State, Eric Davis. Now, we've seen big time receivers from Oklahoma State before. Justin Blackman didn't work out in the NFL. He had uh, some character concerns, we'll say. And then Des Bryant, of course, had a very nice NFL career. And Eric Davis could be the next one. We know his ratings, his skills, his attributes, really good. And the athleticism, I think, is good enough. So Eric Davis, welcome to Houston. Hidden Dev, 91 acceleration, 88 agility, 89 change of direction. Very high for 6'4", 217. 92 jumping, 90 speed. I think that's going to be the game changer at receiver we were looking for. You know, Spencer Brown is available, not to be confused with the tackle for the Bills. If Spencer Brown is available at our pick, it might be a tough decision. But otherwise, I think it's David Johnson, right? Would I draft him at 18? I think I would. Or 17. Spencer Brown is there. Also a 6'8 right tackle. Pretty big. Pretty big. So Spencer Brown has B block shed, B pursuit, and we're comparing a left end to an outside linebacker. So the the scale here is not going to be exact. C tackle ran about 4'7". Great acceleration, good strength. 
A finesse moves. David Johnson's block shedding is bad, but it could be, maybe it's a B at defensive end. They're about the same athlete. Elite acceleration though. Elite change of direction. I think I'm probably leaning David Johnson. Let's do a slight trade down and see if one of them gets drafted. And then it'll make our decision a bit easier. And if, if it's a 50-50, I might as well accumulate a little bit of draft capital. You know, I don't know how far we can move down, but 2025, maybe the Patriots or the Titans. Yeah, let's do that. Or maybe the Eagles move down to 26 and then get a second next year. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, David Johnson's still available. The other one is gone. Bit of a gamble there, but we got an extra pick for moving down, still getting the player we might have taken anyway. And he's only got normal development. Why? He's clearly a bit of a steal based on projected draft range. 80 speed, 90 acceleration, 82 strength. Like everything looks good, but normal dev is lame. Also, David Johnson back to the Texans. Not lost on me. Didn't have to trade DeAndre Hopkins to get him this time. And we're going to draft this linebacker. I know it's early. He's projected to go round three or four. This is a first round guy that's available in the second round. That's enough for me. Elite speed. Clearly a very, very good athlete. And the skills are amazing. A block shed, hit power, pursuit, play rec, zone coverage, tackling. B awareness. Be catching. Welcome to the Texans. Hidden Dev, I would hope so. 88 acceleration, 86 speed. I'm liking what I'm seeing. 21 years old out of Iowa. That's a, that's a stud. Also, another corner here that we might consider. A man coverage down the board at 6'2". He is 23 years old. Oklahoma State, though. You can think about, you know, this corner and the receiver we drafted going head-to-head -head in practice. Not the fastest guy. But he's taller. He's got elite change of direction too, elite jumping. We're going to draft Derek Winston. Hidden Dev, 90 speeds, not so bad. 96 change of direction as well. 91 acceleration, 90 agility. I think that's going to be a nice pickup. And now we have three or four real solid corners. And I'm just going to have to draft another corner. Six foot four out of Arizona. A man, B zone. Physically, seems pretty good. I know everything just says solid, which is middle of the road. But ran in the 4-4s four at the 40-yard dash. We're going to draft him. Looks pretty similar to the player we just got, but he's 6-4, only normal dev. I'm kind of surprised by that, but seems good. Draft recap. I think this ended up going pretty well. Wish the first pick would have been better. David Johnson, a little bit disappointing. Oh, actually, that was the second pick because we got Eric Davis. That's right. And oh my goodness. I just saw 80 overall. It's a fullback, Ashton Donald. Well, he might be the best player in the class. <laughs> okay. He's a hidden dev fullback, 6'3", 222. 88 lead block, 88 trucking, 86 acceleration. This guy's a beast. Oh my goodness. Is this Vontae Leach? He was a monster for the Texans for a season or two or three. Can't remember exactly. Okay, that's a stud pick down the board. Eric Davis is a 78. And I think going to be as good as we expected. 85 catching, really nice. Short and medium route running are good. Catching, catching traffic are good too. Spec catch isn't bad either. All right. David Johnson's a 75, which is better than Dylan Horton. He's got 81 finesse moves. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we start him. Is that better than Star Dev? Could be. Josh Bradley's a 76. Winston's a 76 as well. Okay, I think we did really, really well. Winston, 76. Devin Branch is a 76. I mean, we crushed the draft. No way around it. Whitworth is a 78. And yeah, the fullback is the highest rated player in the entire class. That's insane. We did well, though, with Eric Davis. He was the fifth highest rated player, but that's fine. All right, we got a sick new fullback. Davis is going to be wide receiver one. Just what's going to happen. Hank Dell, John Mechie. Offense looks good. And then defensively, I guess I just start Zadarius Smith. Yeah, we're going to do that. And then we could potentially move Winston back to safety or Desmond King 
but he's still old, so, you know, replacing Jimmy Ward doesn't really make any sense. Harris probably plays over Green. It's a good-looking team, though, mostly. Zadarius Smith isn't going to develop at all, but hopefully the guys behind him do. And Desmond King's going to play in the nickel. I think everything else looks pretty good. And then White Harris is our sub-linebackers. That works for me. Davis can play in the slot, too, sure. Hey, 5-2, and two, much better here at the midseason mark. We are atop the AFC South. And we have 13 players ready to negotiate their contracts. Now, it's going to be Singley and Kenyon Green in here, surely, right? Or is that next season? No, it's going to be next year. It's going to be next because we picked up the fifth-year option. That's right. Okay, so John Mechie, Christian Harris. I probably want to bring everybody back. Damian Pierce doesn't really want to be here, but we really can't afford to let him go. So we're going to pay a little bit more. I know paying a running back, unbelievable. In Madden, it makes sense. Jalen Petrie's back as well. I think he's a Houston area guy also. So kind of nice to keep him close to home. Uh, Christian Harris, five-year deal for basically no money. He can't fully commit to that right now. I wish you did. Wish you would. John Mechie wants to be here. What about a four-year deal? And he's back. To Darius Smith, I don't know if we can comfortably afford to extend him. So... We're in a bit of a tough spot there. Desmond King, it seems like, is going to make next to nothing, which works for me. I'm totally down for that. Welcome back. Oh, yeah, Dev Traits. Show me Superstar Dev for at least the wide receiver. Fullback, I'm fine with Star. Whatever. I hope he's not the Superstar. That would actually be devastating. He's actually Superstar X Factor. Eric Davis is the receiver. Drafting him was the right move. Trading up was the right move. He looks really good. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a nice addition to our offense. Double me, sure. Now, we don't know the fullback yet because fullbacks don't really play a ton. Winston, we don't know. Bradley, we don't know. Because my sub linebacker is Christian Harris. I might move, I'll move Bradley to three. That really won't change his playing time, but I'm going to do it. Maybe it does a little bit. Okay, 10 and 7 snuck into the playoffs. Only one more win compared to last year, but we are a playoff team. So no complaints from me at all. Take getting into the playoffs any way you can get in there. 4,000 passing yards for CJ Stroud. 35 touchdowns to only 5 interceptions. What a year. Even Damian Pierce had a slightly better year. 4.3 yards per carry. And then Eric Davis. Unreal. Rookie year, 104 catches for 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. John Mechie was really good. Tank Dell had a great year. Dalton Schultz had a great year, to be honest. Everyone on offense was great. And then defensively, we started to put some things together. Christian Wilkins, 13 for loss. Same thing with Zadarius Smith. Nine sacks for Wilkins, seven and a half for Haskins. Will Anderson still disappointing. Only seven, six for Smith. We need this pass rush to step it up. Come on. Okay, we're going to try to advance to the divisional here. See if we can get the win. 31-3, we're going home. All right. Back to the offseason, my favorite. Ravens beat the Commanders in the Super Bowl. That's about a 40-minute drive up one highway if you want to get from one stadium to the other, by the way. So that's kind of cool. Roquan Smith, Super Bowl MVP. Regular season MVP is Lamar Jackson. We have our very own Eric Davis, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Love to see it. Will Anderson Jr. and C.J. Stroud both don't want to be here for the future. Don't care. You're getting your fifth-year options picked up early, of course. And you will be Texans, whether you like it or not. Christian Harris, have to bring back. I know we have the other, um, the other linebacker, but no, it's Christian Harris. He resigns. Smith doesn't really want much. Zadarius Smith is back. Yannick Ngakwe snuck onto the team. Only a 72 overall now brutal i do want kaimi fairbairn back i think it's worth the money to offer him a contract and he's back our biggest need in free agency is best player available ronnie stanley to start at right tackle maybe that's not an awful idea justin metabuike could be good fairly local guy donald by the way does have superstar dev okay what about defensively 
Stingley's up to superstar. The rookie has uh, just star. Do we have a retirement? Okay, Desmond King. This is good, though. We prepared for this. It's not good, but Jimmy Ward's gone. I think he retired. Desmond King's going to move back to safety. We need a really good edge rusher badly. I think it really changes the team. And you're saying, oh, what about Will Anderson Jr.? He had seven sacks last year. Like, he's got to be more productive than that. Listen, real life pressures are a better indicator of how well a player is playing. I don't know if that even exists in Madden. We got to focus on production and it wasn't good enough last year. The team does look good, though. Where's Titus Howard? 75. I might offer Ronnie Stanley. Going for it all. Ronnie Stanley, one year, about 28 million. That's the number one offer right now. Not surprising. And there's just no good edge rushers we can go after. 35-year-old Khalil Mack? No. Arden Key? No. Hook'em Horns? Charles Amenahu? Unfortunately, not exactly what we're looking for. Saw Carl Lawson in there. Matt Abuike is not an edge. So we are stuck with what we have. Good to have a little reunion with Chedevion Clowney. I just don't know why we would. All right, let us sign Ronnie Stanley. All right, perfect. He's going to go play right tackle. That's the type of player we need. Jacoby Lindley, B block shed, A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. The corner at the top looks sick, to be fair. But we finally found the monster edge rusher we were looking for. I don't even know that we need to see anybody else in the class. I am trading up whatever it takes to go and get that player. Now, some of these other edge rushers actually look pretty good too. But they're not going to be good, as good as Jacoby Lindley. They're just not. And we will have to trade up to number one if we want him. He is a guaranteed... I don't even have to see the athletic ratings. I haven't seen anything up to this point. I guarantee he's a top five player in the class with all those A's. Guaranteed. If we want him, we got to trade up for number one. And we're going to. So we have to go from 22 to 1. Maybe not going to be super easy. David Johnson, a 1 this year, a 3 and a 4 for number 7 overall from the Cardinals. And that hopefully will enable us to move up to number 1. The Dolphins have no cap room, which means I cannot trade them any players. It has to be only picks or else they won't be able to make any trade happen. And that is the trade. Oh my goodness, it required all six slots. We're trading a first this year, number seven, a first in 2028, a second in 2027, a second, a second, so that's two seconds in 2026, and a third in 2026. We are moving up as much as we possibly can, trading our entire draft a la Mike Ditka, trading for Ricky Williams. Hook him, of course. Didn't work out for them, but this this will be different. And we're getting Jacoby Lindley. He is a top five player in the class. Again, didn't even need to see him athletically to know that. B block shed, A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Only 21 years old. Physically, pretty good. Elite acceleration, good speed, great strength. He is going to be amazing. Look at all those A's. This could be my first true generational player drafted of Madden 24. Welcome to the team, Jacoby Lindley. 87 strength, 82 speed, 91 acceleration at 6'3", 270. This is the difference maker we were looking for to combine with Will Anderson Jr. This is the guy. I'll simulate the rest of the draft. It doesn't even matter. Draft recap. Show me 80 plus. Easy. 78. Ah. Come on. It's still good. And the last guy we drafted with 78 was a superstar X Factor. I'm hoping for the same for Jacoby Lindley. 77 power moves, 79 finesse moves, 77 block shed. Obviously extremely well-rounded. I don't think I would call him generational by any means. Just real solid. I, I had this uh, tight end scouted. 81 overall looked good. 81 overall fullback. 80 overall corner at the top two. Definitely looked at uh, everyone but the fullback there. But uh, yeah, I think I think we made the right move for us. Some other good defensive ends in this class, but I think Jacoby Lindley's is just a cut above. And you know what? With training camp, maybe I'm not satisfied with a 78 overall for Jacoby Lindley. Maybe I want to make it a 79. Well, guess what? Not that hard to do it. We can go get it done right now. And also doing really well in this drill. Uh, let's us unlock, what is it, right? We get um, 
We get rookie snaps as well. So we're going to be that much closer to finding out his true dev trait, which is going to be cool. And he's just dominating these uh, offensive linemen all the way up until that point. And CJ Stroud just absolutely obliterated. Got the strip sack with the big hit. We're having trouble getting around some of these guys, though, with Lindley. Was going well at first. I think he's got the bull rush trait. Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be locked here. Ten seconds to make a play. Go through him. Get around him. There we go. Stroud! Bullseye. That's pretty much gold guaranteed. And there it is. We'll take it. We were spinning on the wheel for like ten seconds. Didn't matter. And you really could do this every year to get an upgrade point, an extra upgrade point for whoever you want. If I did it last year, you know, we would have been uh, probably guaranteed higher numbers for CJ Stroud right now. Last play here. We need a big bullseye. And a finish with silver. We'll take that. Let's see our guy Eric Davis in action. Yeah, he's definitely tall. But of course, in this area, I mean, he moves... Well-ish? I think with him, he just want to do that. Go up and get it. I mean, dude, he's about 20 feet in the air. Oh, what a release. Pass interference? I don't think so. Just strong. What are you going to do? Toe tap? Oh, yeah, this is... He's money. Red zone monster. Let's give him just a chance. Go up and get it. Oh, he just snags. He plucks it out of the air. Beautiful. DB's gone later. <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay. Easy gold. Put it up there. He goes up and gets it. Make a play on the ball. Make a play on the receiver. Doesn't matter. Let's see it. All right. Finally, they did something. And to start the year, we're going to have a camp standout with our linebacker, Josh Bradley. Now, I don't know if he's going to get two TFLs or even a sack versus the Jags. It's possible. But as an off-ball linebacker, I think it's less than likely. But let me show you what could end up being the final team before we make this run in 2026. Real solid team, obviously. Offense. Got some weird superstar players, but Eric Davis is going to be the big one. Have we not unlocked the ability to use superstar X-Factor players yet? I guess I have to do that, but the overalls look pretty nice. And then defensively, Lindley is going to start. He really could start at any of these defensive line positions. We actually have somebody else in there as well. Derek Stingley's up to an 85. The secondary in general is looking pretty good. Linebacker's not so bad either. But where do we play Jacoby Lindley? To Darius Smith, I guess we could slide over. But I don't know. Feels a little, little bit light. So I think Haskins is going to start. However... When we run out with a rush defensive tackle, it might be a different setup. So Lindley's going to start, and then when we actually rush, it's probably going to be, at least for now, Lindley as a rush defensive tackle, Anderson Wilkins, of course, and Zadarius Smith. Now, depending on if Lindley has Superstar X-Factor or not, or even Superstar, now we wouldn't be able to unlock Edge Threat already. But we, we might move some things around, but base starting defensive end and rush D tackle when it is required. Six and one at the midseason mark. This is exactly what we wanted to see. The next best record in the AFC South right now is three and three. So it is early to celebrate, but I kind of think we've made the playoffs no matter what. This really feels like a division win. So... I'm feeling good about it. John Mechie's into the 80s comfortably now at an 81. And I really think we could be in heavy contention for a first round bye in the AFC. So we're going to keep trying to win. Just beat the Browns 45 to 7. Let's keep it up. Let's make it happen. Let's make the playoffs. We go 12 and 5, win the division, and we are playing in a wild card game. Okay, that is, it's annoying. There's no way around it. That just is frustrating. CJ Stroud only threw 26 touchdowns, did throw for 4,000 yards. I'm hoping that they were just vultured by Damian Pierce. He had 18 on the ground. Very good year, the best of his career. 
Eric Davis continues to dominate near 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns on 93 catches. Nobody else really did anything special. John Mechie had a very good year overall, though. And then defensively, plenty of tackles for Devin White. Jacoby Lindley, quite a rookie year. 16 tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks. His dev trait is only star. It's okay, though. He looks very, very good. Don't regret trading up for him. He's still a beast, you know? So, again, don't regret it one bit. He led the team in sacks. Will Anderson Jr. has been incredibly disappointing. I don't know if it's been a product of the playbook, but his speed, acceleration, and acceleration is actually quite high. He's not really like a burst guy. That's not the strength of his game. His, his get-off times are shockingly low compared to how productive he's been at Alabama, at least. But the sack production just is not there at all. Very pedestrian numbers for Will Anderson Jr. the entire thing. And uh, finally forcing some real turnovers. But man, disappointing from Will Anderson Jr., I'm going to be honest. All right, we got to jump in. I'm not getting eliminated here in 2026 without at least watching it. Okay, Texans Ravens, the Jacoby Jones Bowl, the Bernard Pollard Bowl. Can I think of any other Ravens and Texans players? Did Derek Mason get to the Texans at any point? I'm sure there are more, obviously, but none are jumping to mind. I'm sure there are more, but you know what? Can't worry about it right now. Got to worry about beating the Ravens, and it's not going well. Down 24-7 to already. How about some touchdowns? All right, we brought it right back. It's 24-21 Ravens, 30-21 to now. We have just under six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. We need a drive. We're going to jump in and uh, see if we can't make it happen. We have Tank Davis, John Mechie. Tank Davis. Nope. Tank Dell and Eric Davis, John Mechie, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz wide open. Turn up field. Stay in bounds and then get out of bounds. Perfect. Being a Tank Dell touchdown, working off play action. There it is. Wide open. Stroud misses him. And you hit it on the run. Stroud for Dell for the end zone. Touchdown, Texans. We are not done yet. Tank Dell, big score. And we have brought it within a field goal. Defense needs to do something. How do we get the football? Interception by DJ Reed for 61 yards on the first play. DJ Reed could be a, a playoff hero. DJ Reed, dude, we might take the lead with time to spare and that is a Damian Pierce touchdown touchdowns in rapid fire action for the Houston Texans we're gonna go up by four points here and we gotta play some defense I mean we forced a punt and then we got a big play to tank Dell for 27 yards this clock's got to be ticking we're gonna go we're gonna go tempo Burn that clock. Not tempo. I don't want tempo. Totally didn't realize what I just clicked. Okay, don't worry about that. I mean, I said it out loud, but it didn't It didn't register, you know? So that's a nice play. We're going to make that take us to the two-minute warning. Turned on two clock. Now we're good to go. First down certainly ends the game. Victory formation. Game over. 35-31. We win in wild fashion here in the wild card round of the playoffs. All that to make it to the divisional. After a 12-win season, we have to play in the wild card round of the playoffs. That's nuts. Texans-Broncos. This is the legendary... No, no, it's not. Never mind. Never mind. I do want to say, though, was Raheem Moore... Not to be confused with the defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris, but was Raheem Moore also a Texan? I know he was a Bronco. And that happened in the uh, Ravens game. He got beat over the top, I want to say. Oh, almost just simulated the next week. Don't want to do that. I want to jump in. Raheem Moore, of course, Bronco from 2011 to 2014, was a Texan immediately after in 2015. Don't know how I remembered that, but we did. Also, uh, was on the Giants offseason team. Nice. A little training camp cut action. Okay, we're up by 14 early, but the Broncos are trying to cut into that a little bit, but we just keep scoring, so... Hasn't really been a big issue so far, but now they're really cutting into our lead. It's 21-17. Now into the fourth quarter. We've made it 28-17, and that should be it. 
35 to 24 is your final. Never even had to jump in. Smooth sailing as we advance to the AFC Championship game. And Eric Davis, wow, he's going to be up into the 90s here potentially. Might stick at an 89 overall because we upgraded Playmaker. Nope, 90 overall. Injury, wow, is a 40? Is that his injury rating? Oh my goodness. Dude, imagine drafting this guy. You've never seen this in a previous Madden, at least not recently. Because we just drafted, you know, a monster player who, if we had injuries on, would not be able to get through a season. 40 injury? I will say, I like that. Adds a little bit more, like, realness to the league. And it really sucks if you get, like, a Penny Hardy, uh, Hardaway or, or Grant Hill. I kind of think of those type of players more with the NBA. Uh, but RG3, for example, in the NFL, you know, these guys that are so talented but can't stay healthy or maybe are never the same after an injury, which uh, absolutely sucks. I get it. But, man, I think that makes franchise mode a little bit more exciting. I might be alone in that, but I like that. It's going to suck when the guy gets injured, but it makes it feel more real. Titans are an 84 overall. I mean, let's just run through them. Okay, we just take the lead 14-7 to as we go into the halftime locker room down to the third quarter. Titans make it a four-point game and take the lead. We are mounting a nice drive, though. 17-14. Here's what we need to do. Score a touchdown, but also effectively manage the clock. So I'm going to be in no rush to snap the ball here. If we play our cards right, I mean, the Titans might have, like, 40 seconds. We'll have to see. Hopefully less than that, but I don't want a first down immediately. This should take us to the two-minute warning. We got real close. That's exactly what I wanted. Third and inches could not have done that any better. And then we'll have, uh, I would say, pretty much an easy first down. And then we could just run the ball, waste time, go to the Super Bowl. It sounds so good on paper, but we need to convert this third in inches. That's the biggest thing. If we got to fourth in inches, whatever. But yeah, we do make it. Damian Pierce gets it easily. And we just got to take time off the clock. They might not even have 40 seconds, as I said. It might be less than that. Don't score. Don't score. I tried to Ahmad Bradshaw not go in at the end, but Ahmad Bradshaw just did he did score on that in the Super Bowl. They're going to have more time than I wanted, but that's okay. It's going to be a four-point lead. All we have to do, don't allow a touchdown. All we have to do is not allow a touchdown. That's it. That seems easy, right? Nobody's over the middle, and that was not my responsibility. Jared Goff in Tennessee now. Man, they're, they're going through it. All right, we're going to pick up this up. Uh, Probable vertical route with Devin White. Slot right. Oh, it actually wasn't. Gonna hang out. Keep him in bounds. Come on. No! Desmond King beat. Manned up against Traylon Burks. We know Traylon Burks is amazing. If you watch my Superstar series, that's evident. Jalen Petrie diving interception. It's over. We're headed to the Super Bowl. Jalen Petrie. He had, what, five or six interceptions last year in real life? And now gets the game-sealing interception to send us to the Super Bowl. Amazing moment. Electric finish. AFC Championship done and dusted. We're headed to the big one. Super Bowl. 50, maybe even 60 at this point. I, I don't know. I, I forget what year it is. I think Super Bowl 60... Is 2026 is to 57 in real life right now coming up? I think it is. So this would be 60. And it's the battle for Texas. Who's a player that's played for both the, the Cowboys and the Texans? Brandon Cooks hasn't played for the Cowboys yet, but like he's on them. He's going to. Oh, Jacoby Lindley, ability slot. He's got at least superstar. Well, he got upgraded to super, superstar. We already saw that it was a uh, star. I forgot about that. With morale, he's playing into the 90s as a rookie. Yeah, I mean, we made the right call. We absolutely made the right call with him. He probably won Defensive Rookie of the Year, right? Had to have. He did. He had a great season in that hybrid, you know, rush D tackle. 
slash starting defensive end role, which is exactly what we wanted. He played great. And this is for all the marbles. Texans Cowboys. Coming up next, let's bring home the Lombardi to Houston for the first time. All right, this is it. It is three to three. Wow, fun Super Bowl so far. More field goals, finally the first touchdown, but unfortunately it's for the Cowboys as they take a 10 to six lead, but we grab the lead right back, 13 to 10. Under three minutes to play. The Cowboys have the football. We're gonna jump in here on defense. Maybe one more play before the two minute warning. We're gonna let Jalen Petrie do his thing. And uh, also another uh, Cowboy Texan, by the way, Dalton Schultz on the team right now. Just realized that, somebody probably said that. But for some reason, when I saw the Cowboys 87, and uh, and and I, I think Dalton Schultz wore 87 for the Cowboys, just made me think, oh, Dalton Schultz. But uh, he might have been 86, actually. No, is that Jake Ferguson? I, now I gotta look it up. No, he, he did wear 86. Okay. I, I was right the second time. And then I corrected myself incorrectly. Don't worry about it. I had to play the contain there for Dak Prescott in case it was read option. Tony Pollard still in Dallas. 10 rushes for 24 yards. We've obviously done a pretty good job of keeping him in check. But we got to keep the Cowboys out of the end zone here. Oh, that's going to be a nice tackle for a loss. Look at you. It's Christian Harris. Shooting the gap, making a play. Third and 11. Absolute no-brainer pass commit spot. Dak going to take off. And he's going to get hit hard. Christian Wilkins makes the play. And the Cowboys will have to settle for three. They'll tie up the game. We'll have just over a minute to get ourselves into field goal range. And hopefully make an iced kick. I don't like my chances of doing that, but we'll see. So maybe scoring a touchdown would be better. One minute to decide the Super Bowl. And we're starting with a run. Damian Pierce first down. 22 rushes for 110 yards and a touchdown. He might be in, in search of Super Bowl MVP. 40 seconds. We're getting out of the pocket here. I don't think they have the speed to contain C.J. Stroud. Hinkins knocks out Stroud after seven. We still have timeouts. I'd like for Dallas to use there so they can't ice me. I'm going to guess that's not going to happen. But we are pretty much to field goal range. So that's not really an issue right now. We're going deep down the field. A little crazy. Way too crazy. C.J. Stroud, two picks in this game, by the way. Not my fault. Can't can't blame me for those. RPO, handoff, and Dallas actually does call a timeout. It's fourth and inches, although we're not going to be able to get them to use them again. We're going for it, obviously, in this spot. It was just, it was well designed to not get it. We'll call a timeout, first and ten. Okay, 15 seconds, no more timeouts. We're just going to the flat immediately or we're scrambling just kidding deep down the field for schultz stiff arming out of bounds inside the 10 that was really getting a little bit risky but we got to risk it for the biscuit and it pays off with a huge gain stroud on the run hits the big tight end the former cowboy and could win us a super bowl i'm not under any circumstances kicking in this spot yet First and goal from the nine. I do not trust myself to make an ice kick, even from this range. We're going to try and score. High point for Schultz. Does that count? That was through the uprights, right? It's a field goal. We take the lead. No? Cowboys not going to try and ice us? All right, there it comes as soon as we try to kick it. So instead, I'm not going to kick it. Five seconds. We're high pointing it no matter what. Dalton Schultz out of the end zone. And those high throws are, are not working for me right now. All right. Fairbear out there again. I don't know. And they're going to ice us. You've already iced us. What are you trying to prove? You're going to double ice me? We go to the left here. Hopefully that's online. I have no idea if it is or not. Here's the kick. Up and good. As time expires, the Texans have won it all. C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson a little bit, uh, Derek Stingley, Jalen Petrie, John Mechie, all your favorite Texans, Christian Harris made a big time play, and we are Super Bowl champions, that's Damian Pierce, and uh, yeah, 
He had a great game. He might be Super Bowl MVP. Dak loves it. Of course, who wouldn't love losing the Super Bowl? Got to give everybody a hug. That's huge. Almost brought a tear to my eye. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe. You like the videos. If I say it enough, it's going to get conditioned into your brain that you do like it. You like the videos. You're having a good time. You're going to be back tomorrow. Take it easy.